Hello and welcome to this iNav tip. Now iNav is something that I've been doing for a very long time and I've got lots of videos on the channel. In fact, the last thing that I built with iNav as I'm recording this to camera is the Mini Drac and it has been a spectacular experience. The right wing Mini Drac is a very, very good aircraft to begin with, but then sticking iNav on it has let me get the on-screen display information and also do things like GPS return to home. But the question in this video is for a couple of Patreons of mine, and that is Chris and Preston, who both have asked me in the past four or five days exactly the same question. Now, both Chris and Preston are very capable builders in their own right, so the fact I'm getting that question probably means that this isn't clear. And that is how do you trim something like a fixed wing model. Now, this is a, a Nano Talon. This is the black um, edition. But this is the same regardless of whether you're building a wing, something like this, a traditional aircraft. Um, the way that you trim iNav in a fixed wing is really quite basic. But obviously, although I cover it in every single series that I do with iNav with fixed wing builds, uh, if Chris and Preston are asking about it, then it needs another video. So this is it. Let's talk very quickly about the normal way that you would trim an aircraft. Now, you need to make sure that a plane like this, an airplane, is set up mechanically very well. So that means that all the servos inside, or the servo linkages are at 90 degrees, that the control surfaces are in line with the wings and the tail, and that's going to give you the best chance of it all flying well. Obviously, assuming that things like center of gravity and everything else are all tickety-boo, then there will be a little, little bit of trimming when you first fly it. Now, the reason that we have to trim aircraft is that there is, uh, when you turn the prop, uh, not only is the motor trying to spin the prop, it's also trying to spin the model in the opposite direction. So you get some roll. So there's normally a little bit of trim for aileron that you have to do, and potentially a little bit for your elevator, just to make sure that as you're flying at cruise throttle, the model is flying and not gaining or losing altitude. Now, if you actually looked at how the model is flying, uh, when it's all trimmed and it's all tickety-boo, and again, you, to do that, you're going to use the trims on the radio. The trims on the radio are kind of these little things here by the bottom. Uh, once you've got all that set, then you'd probably store the trims in OpenTX so you know what's right. And then next time you fly it, you should just be able to kind of chuck the thing and it'll fly straight and level and it'll be beautiful. But if you look at it as it's actually flying, it won't be completely level. It'll actually be very slightly nose up, typically, only by about five to eight degrees, depends on the model type, but you tend to find that that's actually how it's flying. And that's why a lot of FPV aircraft, like this one that has a camera in, the camera doesn't point straight out, it actually points out slightly down just to take that angle into account. So now we've refreshed our memory, on how you do it manually, let's talk about the extra steps if you put something like a flight controller into a model like that. And I would always recommend fly it manually first, make sure you know how all the controls need to be for that kind of flying, because if you have already flown it and you know where all the control surfaces need to be, you can set those back up with all the servo output stuff in iNav and it'll be pretty straight right out of the box. If some of the central gravity is the same and using the same proper motor, those things will pretty much be trimmed out of the box as well. Now there's a couple of steps to this. Some of it is setting up the flight controller, some of it is setting the iNav system up for the model that you have it in. The first thing that you'll see in every single video that I do with iNav is that you have this six step accelerometer calibration that you have to do and I typically do this on the bench and that's where you put it in each of the attitudes, so left, right, nose up, nose down, upside down, and you are calibrating it. And when that is all done, then iNav knows exactly how the accelerometers are working and knows how things are moving. The thing is, that is only calibrating the accelerometers inside the flight controller. That's got nothing to do with how it's going to fly the model. And a lot of models don't necessarily have a really nice flat location where the flight controller is going to sit. So sometimes you're going to install the flight controller at a slight angle anyway. You just not be able to do it any other way. In fact, in that mini drag build that I've just done, the flight controller was on a piece of foam that had a slight downward angle. So when it was the plane was sat level on the bench, uh, as far as the flight controller was concerned, it was actually sat slightly nose down because it was actually sat on a piece of foam 
that had that attitude. Now, in INAV, we have to calibrate level and tell the INAV flight controller and software what level feels like in the plane. So the way you do that, pop it on the desk, make sure that the wings are completely level, and then I normally put something under the nose just to lift the nose up a smidgen. I'd only do it four or five degrees. This is a guess initially. Then go into INAV and in the main page, it'll show you in the top left hand corner where you can see that box flying around, both the pitch and roll. And you're looking specifically at the pitch, but the pitch number will show you what the flight controller is reading, the amount of, of, in degrees of nose up. And that, then you need to go into the configuration tab, go into board alignment and type that number into there. Once you reboot the flight controller and come back, you should find that when the plane is sat on the bench, don't move it with that little, I use post-it pads, just happens to be what's on the bench when I'm doing this. And then you go into that main tab in iNav, you should read zero degrees pitch, zero degrees roll. And that means that that is the attitude that you've just set that iNav is going to try and fly the plane at and use all the control surfaces to get that attitude as it's flying along. Now that necessarily isn't going to be right the first time and it's also not going to potentially be the same as the model when it's actually lying flat on the bench with the wing, the bottom half of the wing flat. It's normally, as I said, going to be slightly nose up, but it's very, very dependent on the model. The next thing to do, of course, is to test it out. Um, you need to fly the model, stick it in angle mode and fly it around. Now in angle mode, if you take your hands off the sticks, iNav is going to uh, try and keep the model at that level that you've just told it, which is probably slightly nose up in reality, and you need to watch what's happening. Ideally, it should fly around, and even in that slight nose up attitude, you should see it, particularly at cruise throttle, not sinking or gaining altitude, it should maintain its altitude as it flies around. Now, if when you're flying at cruise throttle, you find that it is actually gaining altitude, then take it back to the bench, drop that by a couple of degrees, reset the stuff in iNav, so iNav now thinks that's level, or if the other way around, if you're flying it along and it always feels like it's sinking, then you probably need to go back to the bench and probably raise the nose another couple of degrees, just a smidgen, and then go through this process again. It's slightly iterative, but if you get it right, it means that in angle mode, the plane pretty much flies itself. And because a lot of the other flight modes rely on the level being correct, if you don't have it spot on, then things like loiter, GPS return to home, you'll find that it kind of flies like this as it's constantly hunting around and using things like the GPS altitude to try and correct itself. Once you have that set up, and it might take you a couple of flights, I'd recommend taking your laptop to the field and just plugging it in and um, getting that old stuff done, is then the last thing to do is something called servo auto trim. Now, normally, as we said at the beginning, you would use the trim buttons on your radio to trim how the model flies in manual mode. And in manual mode, it's basically telling I now if you don't want any of the help, and gives you almost direct control of all the control surfaces. When you put it into manual mode, the only thing that iNav is really doing is doing all the mixing for you. Now, once you have it flying straight and level in angle mode, you can set up a mode called Servo Auto Trim and flip that on. And what that does is iNav takes a note of where all the control surfaces need to be. Again, as we talked about at the beginning, there's usually a bit of... Uh, roll needed to counteract the torque roll from the motor. There might be a couple of clips of trim on the elevator to keep the nose at the attitude that you've set for level. What it'll do, it'll score those new midpoints and when you land, disarm, they'll be saved into iNav and it'll probably end up back where it was when you were flying it manually and trimmed it manually. So those are the steps. First of all, you can do the six point calibration as part of the INF setup. That isn't going to be teaching it level. Install the flight controller into the model, raise the nose slightly, offset the flight controller. So at that slightly nose up attitude on the bench, you see it reading, INAV reading the position as zero degrees pitch, zero degrees roll. Go out and test it, refine it, make sure that it's maintaining its height at cruise throttle. Once that's set, then you can do a servo auto trim and iNav will also trim all of the control surfaces. So if you want to fly it like the Stolic, you can put it back in manual and hool around and do all the acrobatics that you want. 
But that's the way that I do it and it means that iNav performs beautifully. And if you don't go through that process and get your level right so that it does maintain its high as it flies along, then all the other modes don't work as nicely. iNav, as I had on that previous slide, uh, will fly a well set up plane brilliantly. Uh, it will also fly a badly set up plane okay, but if the plane is set up well to begin with uh, mechanically, it'll uh, have much more latitude to work with to get it absolutely spot on. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to Author Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.